Before we start on the heart of these tutorials, the jQuery scripts, I'll go through the preliminaries, the database which contains the various lists, and the PHP files and other files that we need. I don't want to spend long on this because this is not the focus of the tutorials, so I've already prepared these files in the zip archive. The link to this is given below in the lesson text. You should download this zip file now and save it somewhere convenient on your computer. Don't type everything in for this lesson. Use the files in the zip archive. Just follow along and see how it all works, or skip forward if this is all familiar to you. You need to have XAMPP, LAMP or MAMP according to your system up and running as a local web server before you go on. If you haven't got this yet, then Chapter 3 of my Ultimate Web Development course, which is free, takes you through setting up XAMPP and troubleshooting if it doesn't work. And the link to this is in the lesson text. First in the initialized database folder of the zip archive is the SQL file you need to create the database. Extract this. Go to phpMyAdmin and click on Import, and this will create a database named jQuery Ajax containing four tables. Named Fruits, List, Parts, and Toys. And we'll use each of these tables as we work through the tutorials. We'll be using the Fruits table first. This Fruits table consists of a list of names of fruits each one uniquely identified with an auto-incrementing ID number, and a column recording whether or not each one's available. This uses enum yes or no as the data type. Now make a folder named Ajax Interfaces in your htdocs folder, and extract the contents of the folder preliminaries in the zip file to this new folder. Now, looking at the files, we'll start out with sortable.php. This begins by including the database connection file, connect.inc.php, in the PHP includes folder. Connect.inc.php consists of a PDO connection named $db, connecting to the jQuery Ajax database that we've just set up in try catch clauses. If you're not familiar with using PDO to connect to a MySQL database, check out my separate tutorial on that at webinaction.co.uk. Then we include classes.php in the classes folder and create a new instance of the display class named $display, passing the contents of the database connection as the $db object into the class. The rest of sortable.php is an HTML file in UTF-8 character set with a link to an external stylesheet in the CSS folder. The only notable things in the stylesheet are that the two lists are both floated left so that they appear horizontally alongside each other. And I've styled the cursor as the move type of cursor where we hover over any of the list items. Sortable.php then consists of our two lists inside divs with the IDs left and right. And these contain ULs, unordered lists, with the IDs available and out of stock for our two lists of fruit. The LIs, list items to go inside the UL tags, are generated by classes.php, with methods named available and out of stock working on the display object. Classes.php has just one class in it, named display to which we can add custom methods for all our various displays. We make available the details of the database connection using the $db object that we've passed in. We set it as private because it's not needed outside the class. Then we use the magic method construct, as double underscore construct, to set $db to the method $this and then arrow db. And then we can use this in our custom methods. The first of these methods, named available, first creates a variable named $output, and initially it sets this to empty. And then it returns the results from an SQL query, where the available column in the database contains the value yes, meaning that that item's available. 
We can use a MySQL query passing the values straight in like this without worrying about security because these values are hard coded, they're not user input. The results from the database query are concatenated with li tags and given the ID number in the database to identify each list item. Finally, $outputs return to sortable.php where it's echoed out using the method available operating on dollar display. Then we have a second method, out of stock, and this is identical, except that this one returns items where the value in the available field is no. And then this is used in exactly the same way in sortable.php to generate the out of stock list. With tabs and new lines inserted, the HTML generated looks like this. Back in sortable.php, we now need to put in the links to uh, jQuery and jQuery UI at Google CDN. We could download these scripts and link to the local copies, but there are lots of very good reasons to use a CDN, so we'll use Google CDN. I'm working offline, so I need to include HTTP, the protocol. If we're working online, or if we move it online, if we move the project online, we could delete that and just start out like that with the two forward slashes. Because the scripts are available, both over HTTP and HTTPS protocol. And if we leave the protocol out here, then it will load HTTP if our document is via HTTP and the secure version if our document is um, over HTTPS. But for the moment, we have to put that back because we're working offline. So let's just check that jQuery works. We'll just make a little script. And then we'll start out with the document ready wrapper. We we'll just put in an alert. Reload the document and we get our pop up jQuery works. So we know that jQuery is um, installed and working properly. That's a nice simple test. So that's that. All the preliminaries are done. Just go back and delete that. And now we're ready to go on and write the first of our jQuery Ajax interfaces using sortable connect with.